Hi, Nico from VoiceBlock here. And uh, in this video, we will go over um, a project that will explain you how to use or uh, how to uh, deal with, with uh, different ways of using the uh, uh, some of the Google API and um, mostly those related to uh, places and uh, geocoding. So in this project, I've split this in three parts uh, with the, uh, the most basic uh, to the up to the uh, more uh, advanced one, and with three uh, three examples. So the first one is just uh, from um, from a user input, so an address. We want to use the um, autocomplete uh, endpoint uh, from the Google API to uh, get the correct corresponding or the, the the matching address. So this one is pretty simple. Um, it's just a matter of uh, capturing the entire user reply saving this in uh, the, the variable you want to use, in my case, um, saving all this into address, setting your um, API key, uh, because those uh, API, or at least some of those endpoints, uh, need uh, an API key. And you can get this API key on your uh, Google Cloud account. So here, this is the request. The method is a get. And uh, we are using the uh, uh, place autocomplete endpoint. And from the input, so the, the um, entire user reply, uh, we try to extract and find an address. And um, as always, when whenever you deal with API, uh, best practice for you guys is to test those API into something like Insomnia or Postman uh, before even uh, trying to put that in voice flow, because you want to be sure that your requests are correct, uh, the syntax is OK, you are not missing any headers or parameters or stuff like that. And uh, a good way of doing this, again, is to try first in uh, a specific tool uh, or a tool meant for this. So in my case, I'm using Samya. And uh, the um, the API we are going to use here is, I think that's the one, yes, place autocomplete. So the input in that case uh, is a French address. So if I run this, the uh, response is this, and what we want to do for this example is just grab the uh, the description, which is right there. So this is the full address, uh, and this is the um, so basically the ma the matching address based on on the user uh, user input. So know that we are uh, we know the the path. So this will be a prediction. This is an array. So we want the first item. So that will be a zero, and the description. Um, now we can, and we know that uh, everything is working here. I've just copy past the URL I'm using and uh, replaced the uh, the parts that I want to be uh, uh, populated or dynamic with my voice flow variable. In that case, input will be uh, again the uh, address uh, from the user um, the user reply, and we need an API key that I'm setting uh, right there. So. We also know that the pass is predictions, uh, first item in that array, and description. So the capture of the full pass will be response, which is always uh, needed because this is this is the response. This is basically uh, all this. Uh, then dot predictions uh, zero dot description, and we we are mapping this value to address. So simply replacing the previous uh, value from the user to the matching one and most likely the more complete uh, one. So let's give it a try. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, I, I'm using just a short way of saying uh, Avenue, uh, but no country, no, yeah, no city. And uh, the API was response is uh, the, full, uh, the full address with the city and then the country. Um, so that's good. This one is working again. This is the uh, the most basic one, but uh, sometimes uh, can be very useful whenever you deal with uh, with address from uh, a survey, from uh, a form, from anything that uh, might come from the user, and you want this to be formatted uh, to a more uh, consistent uh, value, if that makes sense. So the second one, uh, we are using multiple uh, call here, um, actually two. Uh, because we are not using an address anymore, but a place. So the variable is a bit different, uh, and the um, the endpoint as well. 
we are using the place, find place from text. So the text will be the entire user reply, uh, reply but we are mapping this to the place variable this time. Uh, this will give us an ID because what we want to do here is from a specific place, um, we want to get some information like uh, opening hours, uh, rating, but also we want to get a, a preview of the map, so an image, as well as a link. So the user will be able to click on a button in a card step to open Google Map um, centered in that uh, on that place, that specific place. Uh, so first, let's let it uh, in action. So give me a place. I will say a Tour Eiffel. And uh, we will go over all those uh, or all those uh, steps and then generate this card. As you can see, we have uh, the uh, place name. So we are getting this from the IPI. So this is not the French version. This is, again, this is coming from the response and uh, the rating as well. Here you can see we have a space. It's because if we do have a phone, we will also show it right there. And the button open in Google Map, if I click on this, you will see that um, we will get access to uh, the place information in Google Map uh, with uh, yeah what we've just fetched in there. So I will close this and let's see how it works. Uh, again, setting the uh, um, API key because uh, ultimately what you can do is generate a component for that. So you don't want to just uh, set that API everywhere in your project. You just set it once and then you can reuse this component whenever you want. Um, the, uh, the first call is a bit different. Again, we are using the find place from text. So it's also way more simple because uh, the user will say it will give you a place and, uh, and from this you will get uh, an ID. So let's uh, yeah, get place ID from text. So that's the one. And the response is uh, pretty, uh, pretty short. What we want here is the candidates. That's an array. We want the first one, uh, and we want the place ID. So this is what we are doing here. From the response, fetch the uh, in the candidates array gets the first item, and uh, this item is uh, this item name is place ID, and we are saving this into the place ID variable. And then we are going to use that place ID with another call to get all the information we need. And uh, this is done with the uh, place detail endpoint where we are sharing a place ID, so the one we've just got from that previous call, and the different fields we want. Obviously, you can tweak that and choose whatever you want, but in my case, I want the name, the rating, uh, the phone number, and the opening hours. So uh, that's pretty much it. Again, the API key is set uh, in the top of the, this combined block. And uh, in that case, we want the response dot result. So let's see how it looks in our uh, in uh, in Samia. The response look like this. So what we want to look at is the result. And uh, instead of uh, mapping all the value we need one by one, we will use the set step to then uh, populate those different uh, variables. So what we want to get or save into a variable is this object, so the result. Result will be all this. So after, what we can do is, okay, we do ha we have result. We've saved that in place results, then use place results to get the formatted phone number or the name or the opening hours in uh, weekday text, for example, even the rating. And so this is what we are doing here, mapping the result, the full object into a new variable. And then from here, we are using a set step with some expression. The first one is, again, we want, uh, obviously we want the place name. So this is in result name. Result is the place result. And name is the name of the item we want to look at. So name, and uh, we also want to stylize that a bit. And we want to do a uppercase. So this is uh, what we are doing right there. Uh, the second one is uh, the phone number. So we are saving into the place phone variable uh, from the formatted phone number. So that's the value, place result, formatted phone number. Uh, otherwise, we set that to nothing. So just, yeah, just an empty string. 
place wedding, uh, same thing here. We are using the um, we are using the uh, value of place wedding from the place result, and we are just adding a little emoji here, the star. And if we don't have any value, uh, we set that to an empty string. Last step: populating the uh, the card. So the uh, the place or the title for the card will be the place name. In the description, uh, we want to uh, use the place phone and the place rating. For the link, so the image, uh, we want to use a link, and this is using this um, static map, map endpoint. And we need to center that on the place name. Uh, you can tweak the zoom if you want to, can tweak the size, up to you to deal with those settings. Um, and you also need an API key here. So that's the same API key, and uh, we are using uh, the value right there. Last thing is the button. So we, uh, we want the user to be able to click on that button to open a link uh, to the place, sorry, in Google Map. So if I click right there, I have just, uh, just a button with the uh, open URL action, and the link is uh, map search uh, and the query. So the query is the place, the place name. The project is available uh, in the post as a link, so you can import that uh, assistant into your workspace and play with it. So no worries, you don't have to pause the video or try to capture everything. You will uh, you will have that. You can you will be able to play with this. Uh, last one is um, again the extended version because what we are going to do here is um, if you remember we have those opening hours so. What we want to do is do the same thing as we've done previously here, but add a more info button that will uh, basically display uh, a text step with some markdown. And the markdown will be uh, all the previous information, a name, phone, rating, plus the, uh, uh, the opening hours. So here we go. Let's give it a try. Parts that building, and uh, that's the card. Again, we have that image uh, generated with the API. The title, we've got a phone, so we uh, show that. We have a rating, same thing here. Uh, and we can open the map and get um, the uh, Empire State Building uh, information as well as the uh, position on the map. But we can also click on More Info, and in that case, we will get a text, uh, which is um, a markdown, and uh, the title, the phone rating, and the opening hours. This has been formatted, and actually uh, we are generating this markdown from um, a JavaScript step. So let's dive in. The uh, capture step, same thing here. We are also saving the entire user reply into the place um, variable. We are still setting the uh, uh, API key here. Same endpoint, we are capturing the place ID, and we are reusing that ID into the next call to get uh, the information uh, for that place. The difference here is, so in this one, we um, map the response.result object into a variable. Here, uh, what we want to do is just get the response. So deal with, with, uh, with all this, because ultimately what we want to do is get that full object because we are going to deal with it in, uh, in the JavaScript step right there. So I'm now mapping the full response to JSON response variable. And in the JavaScript, what I'm doing here is um, setting the variable, the plus name, will be JSON response.result.name. Uh, again, I'm in a JavaScript step, so I'm, I'm, I can uh, access to the variable like this. I don't have to, unlike uh, the other steps like uh, text or other, other, I don't need the brackets, I just need the variable name, uh, which is ND when we have like a deeper pass, for example. So response.results.name is the full response result name. So we are targeting this and saving this into plus name. Uh, we need the uh, place phone, place rating. Uh, we set that to nothing. Remember that uh, variables are, are persistent um between sessions so if you previously set something in there uh be sure to reset the value uh otherwise you might have like a previous value uh, even if you don't get anything uh, from an api call so always a good practice to 
uh, just uh, clear those uh, variables. Um, now we are using this, uh, this function. So the function use the uh, full response, so the JSON response, and uh, go over it to extract, again, uh, the name, uh, the phone number, the rating. We also have like a, a bit of logic, just that if we don't have a phone number, uh, just uh, ignore that, don't add it to the markdown. Same thing for the writing. So if we don't have a writing, don't uh, populate the place rating with it or uh, neither add it to the markdown. Uh, and uh, the opening hour uh, is just a loop through the days, as you can see here. Um, so from the opening hour weekday text, so this is right there. So we have the length of that array. We'll go over all this and generate a markdown uh, for each of those uh, days. So Monday, Tuesday, etc. Uh, and then ultimately we return that to markdown. So we can use this variable right there. Uh, this is outside of the JavaScript step. So now we need the, the brackets here. And uh, we want to show that whenever the user click on more info. So again, let's run this. Uh, I will use a lot to refer again because I know th this one um, doesn't have uh, a phone number. So. You will see uh, that uh, we ignore that in the uh, in the card. We don't show phone zero or nothing. And uh, if you click on more info, the markdown would also not have that uh, phone uh, info because we basically we don't have that phone number, but we do have the opening hours for, for this. So that's um, that's it for this demo. Uh, hopefully, you will get a better understanding of how you can deal uh, with. Uh, the API step, the, the response, and the different ways of dealing with this from the more simple and basic way of uh, mapping your pass within the API step to uh, a variable, uh, the, um, the bit more advanced one where you actually populate a part of the response uh, or not get an object from that response and populate a variable with it, and then use the set step uh, to populate uh, different variables and do some uh, uh, transformation like a uh, uppercase here or some logic. If we don't have an info, set that to nothing uh, or uh, combining uh, the, 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 the string plus uh, an emoji here, for example, up to um, the more advanced one where you deal, um, you d you deal with the response, the full JSON response within a JavaScript set. That's all for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, chat soon. Bye.